Chapter one, the most successful people have good habits in a productive morning. A lot of us often feel that our mornings slip away without accomplishing much. Vanderkamp acknowledges this state of helplessness where we have our sights on the clock, but tackle less important activities and sideline the important stuff. Drawing from her personal experiences, the author cites the challenges she faces every morning while juggling her responsibilities as a mother and creating the right state of mind for her workday. Like her, we encounter the same problems on a daily basis. It is one thing to be out of bed early, but it is another to find a way around the numerous hurdles that we might face before the start of work. Even when we eventually get ourselves to work in one piece, it is common to waste time on less relevant tasks, like replying to emails or looking through content online that is of no importance to our work. Consider this. A 2011 poll by National Sleep Foundation revealed that though an average person aged 30 to 45 wakes up by 5.59 a.m., he or she still does not start their official duties until 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. Instead of subjecting our mornings to mindless tasks, the author lists three categories of activities that should define our mornings. The first involves you cultivating career-optimizing morning culture, while the second should encompass activities beyond primary personal care we owe our family. We should also dedicate time to nurturing ourselves. No, cultivate career-optimizing morning culture and dedicate time to care for family and for yourself. Furthermore, the last category involves activities where we seclude ourselves to enjoy our hobbies, meditation, workouts, or prayer. Regardless of the combination of any of these options, this time frame is in fact our me time, and it goes a long way to define our output. As such, when we stick to active early morning schedules, we will discover that our mornings can defy the chaos and unproductivity tag we give them. The most successful people know the essence of having a productive morning, and so they have adopted good morning habits that would help them make headway while the average person is still struggling with basic morning hassles. Here's the truth. Before the rest of the world is eating breakfast, the most successful people have already scored daily victories that are advancing them towards the lives they want. To hammer home this point, Vanderkam highlighted examples of prominent individuals with morning habits that have seemingly propelled their high achieving status. One of these individuals is Steve Reinman, PepsiCo's former CEO slash chairman. He starts his day at 5 a.m. doing a four mile run on a treadmill, after which he embarks on a culmination of activities ranging from reading, praying, and meditating. Chapter two, the most successful people segment their days into activities. While this may be a given, you will agree that mornings are perhaps the most productive part of the day. In the lead up to establishing the role of discipline in creating productive mornings, Evander Kemp reveals several factors in her daily routine that could derail the desired daily outputs. She claims that it is difficult to replicate the same level of zeal and willpower that drives our mornings from our afternoon tasks. We can liken this situation to conventional workers that schedule their evenings for workout sessions. In most cases, it's very difficult to make time for this, especially when deadlines are looming and your nagging boss is at your throat. Instead, people that are serious about working out do so early in the morning. This resolve takes discipline, as only the discipline would defy morning madcaps. Furthermore, the author backs up the role of willpower in productive morning proceedings by citing research from a professor of psychology, Roy F. Bollmeister, at Florida State University. The study centered on self-discipline, with findings revealing that willpower is susceptible to fatigue, just as our muscles are. Therefore, our willpower gradually degrades with time. Hear this. Willpower is like a muscle. It becomes fatigued from overuse. In this finding, you will know that impulsive lapses are more common later in the day. As such, people on a diet would most likely break them in the evening since their willpower fizzles out with time. Also, a Twitter analysis shows that people tend to use optimistic words in the wee hours of the day. In other words, our capacity to make the right decisions would naturally reduce as we take on more tasks. And so, it is safe to say that morning is a time when our willpower is intact and fresh. We can take advantage of this by allocating self-reflective, critical, and body rejuvenating tasks to these hours. Our inability to do this means we subject our willpower to chaotic schedules or activities that do not add value to our day. Bear in mind, tasks that require self-discipline are simply easier to do while the day is young. Like our muscles, we can also develop our willpower. Just as a bodybuilder takes the pain to bulk up and then maintain it, it is also possible to nurture self-discipline. Once we get to this level, it becomes easier to take on early morning productive activities since they are now part of our habits. More so, accomplishing them will no longer require a strain on our willpower. For instance, brushing our teeth. 
This is an early morning ritual, which we do not need an extra push to get done. This example highlights what we need to adopt proper morning rituals that would normally require an astounding amount of willpower. Chapter three, important activities to assign to your mornings. Now that the need for productive morning habits have been established, what are the best activities we can assign to our mornings? The best morning habits are not important activities that would eventually find their way into our daily schedules. Conversely, the best morning habits require self-motivation. They are long-term rewarding activities instead of habits that deliver immediate payoffs. Unlike many of us, the most successful people use this time to nurture their careers, foster their relationships, and improve themselves. Remember, the best mornings are used for long-term rewarding activities, working on your career, relationships, or your self-development. Nurturing your career. Successful people understand that those few hours before everyone starts vying for their attention is the best time to do focus work. By doing so, they have removed the heavy lifting work from the clutter of other tasks in their schedule to a more productive time. With this strategy, they can assure that interruptions would not disrupt their workflow. To nail this point, Vanderkam listed a host of professionals that have found how important it is to assign important projects to the early hours of the day. Many of them reiterated that mornings are appropriate for critical projects. As such, they use their early hours to accomplish important tasks rather than using them to reply to emails. Ironically, others have found that they are more productive when they use their mornings to resolve mundane issues that could derail their day. Instead of using much of the day going back and forth on social media or emails, they prefer to get this done first thing in the morning and then focus on non-trivial tasks. Try this. Use your mornings to accomplish important tasks rather than using them to reply to emails. Nurturing your relationships. Naturally, we believe that dinner time is the time for families to bond. Contrary to this belief, factoring exhaustion might make this unrealistic. Therefore, chances are that we might not have the energy to give the best side of us to our loved ones. In most cases, we turn up to a family get-together a bit cranky from the effects of stressful hours at work. In light of this, Vanderkam suggests that the early hours of our mornings are the appropriate time to bond with family. We often leave our bed positively energized, and it is ideal that we take advantage of this state to talk or enjoy quality time with our spouse and children. Nurturing yourself. Of course, workouts are beneficial to our body. However, there is more at stake than staying fit. In the book, we see that top executives find time for early morning workouts, even though they have very busy schedules. The determination to burn a few calories in the morning, despite their jam-packed day, highlights the body and soul nurturing effects of this practice. Hear this. Exercise isn't the only thing you can do to nurture yourself. Spiritual practices, praying, devotion, studying scripture, or meditating are all popular too. Apart from getting their body in shape, successful people tend to use this time to ponder important details. To them, this is their me time, a time away from all the chaos, a time where they can take a broader look at some issues and strategize meaningful ways to tackle them. Likewise, some people prefer to use this time for meditation, prayer, studying, or devotions. The most important question to ask yourself is, are these activities helping you create a more unobstructed view of your to-do list and ways to get more value from each day? Did you know, one study from Alpine State University found that people who work out first thing in the morning doze off faster and have less disrupted sleep than those who exercise at other time. Chapter four, how to create productive mornings. After studying the morning habits of some individuals, Vanderkamp suggests ways to force the best morning habits. One, track your time. First, find a way of tracking your daily activities with Vanderkamp stipulating that a week of tracking will suffice. Apparently, it is impossible to streamline our mornings without getting to know what we currently spend them on and why. Apart from tracking our mornings, it is imperative that you get the whole day log on either a work dog or diary. This approach helps us link our morning impulses to other daily routines. For instance, an individual who stays up watching TV may tend to wake up to a chaotic morning. Tracking gives us a clearer perspective of where we are right now and how we can get to the perfect mornings we desire. This is an idea. Record your daily activities in a diary or document. This will help you link your morning impulses to other daily routines. Two, picture the perfect morning. Before we start moving things around, it is helpful to find out what your definition of a perfect morning is. Do you believe workouts should be featured in your early morning routines? Or are you the type that wants to dedicate it to high stake projects? It all boils down to your personal definitions as there are no standard routines that you should incorporate. Do what works for you. Come up with a plan in the morning and assemble what you need, but whatever you do, don't label this vision as impossible. It's easy to believe our own excuses, particularly if they're good ones. 
Three, think through the logistics. Furthermore, after deciding on the important details you need to integrate into your morning schedule, you're left with making it happen. People often go through their logistics and start piling up excuses that could halt the entire process. Instead of focusing on the downsides, you should forego the drawbacks and dwell on how you can fast track the process. For some, adjusting their bedtime could do the trick, while others would need to factor in the responsibilities as parents. Irrespective of your challenges, always focus on ways to make your morning rituals easier. Four, build the habit. Rechanneling our morning energy to productive activities is a vital and difficult part of this process. As such, Vanderkamp advises that it is easier when we adopt one habit at a time. Also, we should track our progress, as it takes a while before these activities become part and parcel of our mornings. The importance of this practice is in the adoption phase. This is the period when we are at risk of faltering. Building a new habit takes effort, so you want to take care of yourself while you're trying. Eat right and eat enough. Take breaks during your workday and surround yourself with supportive people who want to see you succeed. Remember, to prevent the risk of faltering, adopt one habit at a time. Therefore, it is imperative that we take on activities that we find interesting. By doing so, we have the motivation required to get out of bed. Also, incentives are ways by which we can motivate ourselves to stay on track. You can promise yourself a treat whenever you reach a milestone. Tune up as necessary. Do not box yourself into thinking that your morning rituals must remain the same. You can instead adjust your rituals to conform to the reality of your new job, location, status, or responsibilities. The most crucial thing is that you are making the best use of your mornings. Did you know it takes 21 days to implement a new habit and three months to create a new lifestyle? Conclusion. Successful people know the essence of mornings and how their actions or inactions in the early hours define who they are. The wee hours are your nurturing time. Pick out important details you want to improve about yourself and adopt habits that would enforce this. Use your mornings for these three things. One, nurture your career, meaning strategize and do focused work. Two, nurture your relationships. This means giving your families and friends your best. Three, nurture yourself. Do exercises and carry out spiritual and creative practices. The best morning rituals are activities that when practiced regularly result in long-term benefits. Chapter 6. Do a reality check on the routine you visualized and start bringing it to life. So far, you've tracked your time for the week and come up with a mental picture of a good morning. It is time to see if you can give this picture life. To figure out the logistics, you need to answer the following questions. How much time do you need to create this ideal routine? What changes can you make to realize this dream? If you want to cook in the morning, for example, you may need to wake up earlier. That means you can no longer keep late nights. A well-worked-out plan has a higher chance of success, so be very precise about what you want to do in the morning. Focus on making your morning rituals easier. As you have developed a clear picture of what you want to integrate into your morning schedule, you need to implement it. Often the how or the logistics hold us back, and instead of improving our lives, we start producing excuses. Here, we resist change in the first place. You can overcome this by thinking about the practical ways to fast-track the process. Develop the habit. Laura Vanderkam advises that it is easier when we adopt one habit at a time, as it involves rechanneling our morning energy into productive yet new activities. Also, we should track our progress as it takes a while before these activities become part and parcel of our mornings. There's a trick to learn the new habit faster. Make it an enjoyable one. If you wake up to do something you like, your motivation to get out of bed will rise exponentially as soon as you do. Moreover, always reward yourself as you succeed in building new habits. A treat can be anything you like, delicious food, new clothes, etc. Tune up as necessary. Do not box yourself into thinking that your morning rituals must remain the same. You could instead adjust them to conform to the reality of your new job, location, status, or responsibilities. The most crucial thing is that you are making the best use of your mornings. There should be room for unexpected events. Life is full of those. It is very easy to toss your ideal routine in the trash if things keep popping up to disrupt you. Hence, your contingencies must have contingencies. Once things become habitual, they operate as automatic processes which consume less willpower. Roy F. Baumeister, Ph.D. For Laura Vanderkam, her love for running had to be suspended when she was carrying her first daughter. She decided to spend that running time on other self-nurturing activities. She's no longer a nursing mother. She has returned to her 45-minute run. These adjustments and readjustments can happen from time to time. Make room for them. Conclusion Many of us believe that sleeping longer in the morning will help us be more productive during the day because more sleep equals more strength. It is hard to overlook the importance of rest, and sleeping is the best way to do that. However, we get this idea wrong. What we need to do is go to bed early and get up early. Why? The morning is when we reach our peak productivity. Still on the brink of our subconscious, our creativity level is very high. For sure, it is difficult to change our ways to appreciate the beauty of the morning, but it is so worthwhile. Dedicate your morning to the activities that will help you grow professionally, personally, and improve your relationships with loved ones. 
The key point here is not to postpone these until later in the day, or worse still, the evening when we are utterly exhausted from the day's work and sometimes literally feel numb. Adopt several important morning routines like meditating or working out, spending quality time with your family over breakfast, or reading up on the newest trends in your professional sphere. In the morning, our willpower is also much stronger than it is in the evening. Thus, the wee hours of the morning are the best time to start gradually improving your life. Try this. Sometimes, when asked what we did during the week, we can answer one thing. Worked. In fact, we do much more than that, but other activities slip beyond the scope of our awareness. For one week, try to record everything you do during the day as per hour. Of course, you don't need to calculate the minutes. Estimate the time roughly. As you're done with your list, sort the activities into important and unimportant ones. Try to cut the time you spend on the unimportant ones to make room for the other group. This way, you will feel better about yourself and eager to wake every morning to the new day.